Hey everyone, what is going on? My name is Archer Live, and in today's video, I want to talk about the black market in Payday 2, and more specifically, why we don't have it on the console versions on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. This was recently brought up in a comment to the What's Next Payday 2 update video, and where I talked about what could be coming out and potential DLCs and what we might see in the next update in terms of how much content and so on and so forth. And somebody commented and said why we aren't mentioning the black market, and it's a fair point because not a lot of console people have been talking about it. So I thought I'd sit down and do a little video about it, just discuss where I think it could go, whether I think it will appear and what the good side and the bad sides to it might be. So for those of you who don't know, the Black Market was a new system that was introduced to PC versions of Payday 2 back in 2015 for Crime Fest in October. And the way it works is, in a Payday loot card drop, you will get a safe card or a drill card. Well, at least you didn't get the drill cards when they came out, that's how it works now, I'll explain it later. But basically, you got a safe card from playing the game and getting it in a Payday. I've looked it up on the wiki and apparently they have a system in place now, in modern day, where you can only get one every week to stop people from farming it and just kind of cheating or boosting. They have like a server that's set to give you one every week, so you don't kind of over get them and so on and so forth. But basically they came out and every now and then they bring out a new safe and old safes get discontinued. And what's in the safes are specific weapon skins. And they don't just usually change the colour of the weapon or how it looks or the design of the pattern. Usually they have stat changes, so they will increase stability or accuracy or something along those lines. And they come up in five different rarities, the best being legendary. There are a ton of weapon skins and there are a ton that have already been discontinued, a ton that are still in operation. But the thing to note is that in May 2016, when Overkill bought the rights to the Payday franchise and they have now full control of it and that's when they confirmed Payday 3 was happening. Might do a video on that at some point if you guys would like me to discuss that, but that's by the by. They also said that they were going to free up the black market to quote them. And up to that point, between October 2015 and May 2016, you had to pay to get drills to open the safes you got in loot card drops. Basically, you couldn't open the uh, safes for free. You had to pay real money to get them open. And Overkill basically realised what damage it had done to the community and how everyone was really upset with the feature being introduced. So instead, they allow drills to then drop in card drops as well as safes. And hence now, at present day, both will drop at the same time for different safes that are unlocked at different times, such as the Hoxton safe that was introduced in the housewarming party and a bunch of others. Usually there's a new safe that comes out with a new character pack, for instance. But Basically, it's been on the PC since 2015 and been updated since 2016. But on console editions, we haven't seen any of it. And I want to talk about, you know, remind people where we're up to with DLC on the console editions and point out the fact that, you know, if we were going to get the black market, we should have expected it by now. So in terms of content, before we had the most wanted DLC update and we'd only had the big score DLC, we were right up until the end of 2015. Every DLC coming up to the end of 2015 had been released for console access, ending with the point break heists. So that means that by that point on PC, the uh, safes and drills had already been released, you know, for purchase for the drills and for loot drops for the safes. So PC already had them by the time the Point Break heists came out. However, we've also on top of that now had the Most Wanted DLC, which takes us up roughly to mid-2016. In the uh, What's Next Payday 2 video, I basically kind of talked about how we're kind of in a bit of a, a weird situation because we have some of the Housewoman Party and some we don't have. But basically, the thing to take from it is that we are far, far further than PC were when they got the update. And basically now we're at a point in Payday 2's life cycle where compared to PC at this point, they even got the black market drills to be released for free and the microtransactions were removed. I should also note very quickly that you can still buy the stuff on the Steam uh, market. I think it's called the Steam Marketplace. I don't play P uh, Payday 2 on PC much, but basically you could still buy stuff if you want to. It's just now it's not forced. You can get everything for free if you wish to and you put enough time into the game and, you know, open enough safes over a period of time. But... At this point now, we should have those safes if we're going to get them. Additionally, in the How Can We Improve the Console version to Payday 2 video, I talked about a few little uh, issues that Overkill created with the console edition, and one in particular was the presence of a GOAT safe in Firestarter Day 2. And basically what that did over on PC was if you took the GOAT and put it in the van, you secured yourself a GOAT safe. And this isn't the only uh, heist where you can do this. There are four achievements on PC, some of which are now dated, you can't actually do them anymore, but there are four where you basically complete an objective and you get a safe that matches it appropriately. Firstly, for First World Bank, if you find a Titan safe or as you're escaping the bank, open it up and get a letter, it basically gives you access to a First World Bank safe. If you find a hit marked pig in Slaughterhouse, you get a pig safe for the, from the Slaughterhouse um, heist. It might be called the Slaughterhouse safe, I'm not quite sure. Third one, as I've already mentioned, the goat safe. And the fourth one, there was an achievement for framing frame. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure that gave you a safe as well. 
but the, the basically the, the the top and bottom of it is that the goat safe thing is in the console version to payday 2 and i presume as i said in the video overkill were just too lazy to pull it out and they really should have done because we don't have the black market and the reason that those safe goats are there does not apply to console edition so we're just grabbing a goat putting it in a van for 10 20 thousand dollars depending on difficulty and we're not getting anything to show for it so let's talk a little bit about why this is a good update to payday 2 and why it's not and you know talk about you know how it's affected the pc versions first off the bad side it can kind of change how you play a game when things like supply drops or loot boxes or loot cases or whatever you call them added to big games like call of duty overwatch things like that they can change how you perceive a game and it sounds a bit crazy but let me kind of get into it when you play a normal for instance first person shooter like you play call of duty if you'd have played say modern warfare 2 modern warfare 3 you go on the game basically to play the game to experience the perspective of a soldier and fight in a battle if you play a call of duty with supply drops and there's really good stuff in the supply drops that make you want you know want to fight and get the supply drops you kind of lose sight of what you're doing in the game and i i can say i've done this myself but you basically get to the point where you're playing just to open up more drops and just to keep on going. You kind of forget that you're playing a particular game and that you're trying to get involved and feel immersed in the game. And that is a kind of a feeling that gets lost over time as you kind of spend more time going for that. One game I'll mention is Prominence Poker, which is a, a little free game on Xbox One. It's also on PS4 and PC. I've been playing that a little bit in my spare time. It's a very good game, but they recently added loot cases to it where you can get a few free things in there. When they came out, I was kind of really into playing it and, and getting all the loot cases, but I kind of lost touch a bit with the game. I haven't been playing it as much since loot cases came out, and I do think I do blame them a little bit for that. On top of that, Call of Duty, Activision have destroyed their fan base with the supply drop system. Hopefully the next Call of Duty won't have supply drops, but at this point I wouldn't be surprised. But my point being is that these great game franchises, well Prominence Poker not a great franchise, but you get the point. Great game franchises can be ruined by these things and it's important when you bring them into a game to handle them properly. Now the way that they are currently on Payday 2 on PC, I would say is a very fair way of handling it. Because not only do you, are you unable to actually just farm the game for them, that could be your only sole purpose to play the game, you can't do that because Payday servers actually only give you one a week. So you can't log on for the sole intent of just spamming offshore Paydays or doing Jewelry Store on normal over and over and over again like people used to do back in 2013, 2014, just level up, get a bit of cash and get a Payday. Basically, you only get a safe every week. So you cannot go on there with that sole intention. So you're still going on Payday to play Payday, to do the bank robberies, to do the heists, to make money and to have fun with friends. And that core message is really key and keeping it in there is a very good thing. Another way that they've done it quite well on PC now is, you know, after they re remove the uh, cost for drills is that everything can be earned simply by playing the game. And on top of that, as far as I know, Overkill do not have a specific way where you can buy packs of safes, the way you can buy packs of supply drops or packs of Call of Duty points, for instance. You don't kind of bulk buy to just kind of gamble away your money and see what you get in the game. You literally earn them, and if there is a specific safe or a specific skin that you want, they're up for sale on the Steam Marketplace, and you can literally buy what you want if it's available and another user is selling it. And that's a really good way to talk about it and a really good way to implement it because basically you're not over gambling. You're not throwing your money away onto a game to get extra little mini things that don't really mean too much in the grand scheme of things, but you know, you just kind of get roped into the gambling mechanic. But this is where my issue is with it coming onto console. It's taken me a few minutes to get there, but there you go. My issue is there isn't a marketplace of that sense on Xbox One, and to my knowledge, not on PS4 either, although I don't own a PS4, so if I'm wrong, then I apologize, but I'm just make, taking a wild guess there. I don't think it's too different to Xbox. And because of that, I can see problems with Overkill implementing that onto the console versions. We already know about how difficult they're finding to port heists and content and all that onto consoles from PC, and it's the main reason why we get the DLC so late, because they struggle porting it over, because it's not a simple thing on PC where they've talked about in the past. They can literally make a change, send it off to Steam, and it gets approved instantly and they can release the patch. With Xbox and with uh, with uh, PlayStation, sorry, they have to send the update out, it's got to take a few weeks to get confirmed, and they've got to make a release date and put it up. Basically, there's no other way to go about it, and on top of that, there isn't a marketplace where they can trade for these skins. So if they bring it out on console, they may end up going down the route of the Call of Duty points thing, or, quite simply, leave it as getting a save a week. But they would have to establish servers for that, 
that actually control it on Xbox and PlayStation. And technically, for a studio as small as Overkill, in terms of actual mechanics and stuff, that might not be physically possible. So that is something else to bear in mind when you're thinking about will it come to console. Another reason I don't think they'll be bringing it on is because I think Overkill are too focused on both bringing new content to PC and keeping us up to date on the console versions. I do honestly think that at some point, if they really try, they're going to get us up to date. And that's not kind of me being blindsided. I do honestly think it's possible because if you look on PC, there hasn't been a proper content update for a few months. And call me optimistic if you want, but I think that's because a bit more time is being put into console and, pay and Payday 2 players on PC are just kind of taking a step back for a minute whilst Raid World War 2 has been undergoing its beta in the last couple of weeks. A game which I'm not too sure about, I, I'm not really sure they're going to go down that road, but again, that's probably another matter for another video. Might do it, but you know, there's plenty of video ideas coming from this, but basically what I'm saying is there's been less frequent updates on PC, and I'm pretty sure the most recent one when I did the video was the Gage Russian pack, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think that was out like three, four months ago now, so there should be a PC update pretty soon, like bringing out a new heist or a new... Uh, Heister, something like that, but that the reason that there's been so long a span is because I think partially, at least a part of the reason, is because they're too busy bringing stuff to console versions of Payday 2. And in a recent status update regarding Raid World War 2, Almir said that they are hard at work at getting the next content update up Payday 2. I wouldn't look too far into that, as a few subscribers have said, and a couple of people have messaged me saying there's a new DLC and it's coming out soon. I wouldn't look into it that far. I just say that they are hard at work at bringing it out and at some point we'll expect an update but there's no point in saying oh, it'll be in the next few weeks because we really just don't know. But personally at the end of the day would I like to see the black market put into console payday 2? No. I have to be honest and I, while I think that you know having the safes with the weapon skins that change stats here and there can be quite nice I can probably get the stats the way I want from skills, from weapon mods or just straight up using particular weapons. The chances are those skins aren't going to benefit me and I don't want to go down the road of logging on every week just to get a safe. It's not the, the, the kind of case where I can hop on and farm them and just not play Payday anymore for the sake of the game. But still, I want to play Payday purely and solely because it's a good game and because I really enjoy it and because I like making content for you guys and uploading it onto YouTube. If I get that kind of safe mechanic brought into it, it won't completely take over how I play Payday. As I've said, you know, it, do, it there's, I've, as I've said multiple times, there's no kind of opportunity for farming. I feel like that would kind of dilute my opinion of the game and kind of put me off a little bit playing it as much because I'd be too busy trying to go for safes and forgetting about playing the actual game and just generally having a good time. Payday is something I hop on to just relax, have a good time and play with friends or on my own or with random people with subscribers which I have to say has been happening a lot more and I'm really loving that. For anyone who doesn't know, if you want to play Payday with me at some point, hit me up on Xbox One. My game tag is Red Archer Live as the channel name spells with spaces and everything. I'm more than happy for people to join the game if there is space for you to hop in. So I just thought I'd put that out there because that's been a lot more common recently and I'm really good, happy to see it. So, But yeah, I don't really want to go into it much more than that because there isn't a lot else to discuss. We've just kind of, I just want to touch on it because I haven't talked about it a lot and I'm thinking with somebody commenting it that maybe more people are thinking about it. So that's basically my opinions on it. I don't want to see it, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Would you like to see the Black Market DLC implemented? And if so, how do you think it would be done by Xbox and PlayStation? Because honestly, as I've said, I don't think the mechanics are anywhere near similar to the Steam Marketplace, but I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say about it. And if any of you have any more technical knowledge about how these things work with marketplaces, etc., and you want to share that with people down in the comments, feel free. I'd love to give it a read and see what you have to th say. But other than that, any and all opinions are encouraged as long as you're respectful to other peoples and i'll see you on the comments for, about it but other than that thank you all very much for watching this video if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up it's always much appreciated and subscribe if you are new but other than that thank you all for watching i'll see you in the next video take it easy